Many years ago, before I fell helplessly into comedy, I wanted to be something serious, like a journalist. Little did I know that my bluff would be called 30 years later, one summer in the Isle of Wight. Exploring the island for the first time in my life, I was to record my impressions, not just for television, but also in a column for the local newspaper, the august and venerable Isle of Wight County Press. I had plenty of ideas, but I still felt very much the new boy as I reported to their spanking new offices in Newport to collect my notebook and pencil and to meet my new boss, editor Peter Hurst. Around me, another weekly edition was being produced with the quiet confidence of a newspaper that's been at it since 1849. That's right, yeah. It's just a general picture of the successes of all the island high schools. What on earth could I do that they weren't doing perfectly well already? Uh, one way or the other, I'll get somebody to give you a ring um, to, to get a few details. What I'd like is actually to try and find some sort of islander, something sort of local. Um, a story that's actually about the Isle of Wight. In fact, one that I've heard a few sort of mentions about is the story of uh, black magic and, and, and uh, the occult and things taking place and long stone in the middle of the island and all that, a vicar having to go and uh, live somewhere else. I mean, is this a... What can you tell me about this, this, this other side of Isle of Wight life? Like you, we, we've heard little bits over the years about it and suggestions that there is black magic or, and white magic going up on, around the Longstone area on, above Bryston. But actually to be able to uh, find anything very definite to publish has been very difficult. Um, if you were able to investigate that and find out something that we have been unable to do, that well, would be a real, a real scoop for you, wouldn't it? OK, Peter, well, I'll get to work. But you will promise me one thing, you'll be brutally honest with the copy. Absolutely. Yes, okay. we will. We'll make sure that it's absolutely right and only the best goes in. All Thank right. you, Michael. I'll see you. Bye. Cheers, Peter. Thank you. Well, that was it. I was a journalist. Going straight for some hard copy, I headed for Mottiston Down and the famous, or infamous, Longstone. If anything did happen, this is where it all happened. Hello, operator. Yes, I'd like the dialing code for... Uh, the Falkland Islands, please. Falkland Islands, thank yeah. you. Yeah, OK. It's now 010500. Yeah, 010500. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Before leaving to become rector of Port Stanley in the Falkland Islands, the rector of Brook, Brystone and Mottistone, the Reverend Stephen Palmer, was convinced that his parish was the scene of black magic practices centred on the long stone in Mottistone Down. Before taking up his appointment in 1991, Reverend Palmer claimed he had been threatened with his life if he continued to oppose satanic cults.
They are a mess, these. Number nine. Like an island. Um, oh, oh, thanks, Dorothy. Thing is, can I make a phone call, Dorothy? I've got yes. to. I've got to ring the county press because I'm hot on a story about black magic Ooh. on the Isle of Wight. Oh, I'm not surprised. Hello, hello. Yeah, uh, is that the cuttings department? Yeah. Uh, it's Michael Palin here. I need some inf Palin. Yeah, I need some information for the column. Um, I would like to know something or whatever you've got on the Reverend Stephen Palmer, the rector of Brook... Yeah, you know, yeah. That's right, yes, that, that story. OK, if you can get me any material on, on, uh, on Stephen Palmer. Yeah. Right. I'll, yeah, I'll be in later. OK. Thanks. Bye. We're in luck. One of the perks of this new job of mine is access to the newspaper cuttings library, a graveyard of stories that, having enjoyed their day or two of glory, have sunk back into decent obscurity. A number of stories kept cropping up on the same theme, and because it sounded so unlike the Isle of Wight, I became rather interested. The stories concerned witchcraft. This was an edifice set up, I believe, by the Druids several thousand years ago, and it would have a, it'd be like a magnet, I should think, to people that were interested in the occult. And certainly incidents that we've investigated over the last six years, um, we found people where they've been digging around by the stones, and in fact, on one particularly unpleasant occasion, 1987, uh, a couple that were walking their dog found uh, a coffin on the stones with uh, um, a, a doll in there with a nail through the head which would appear to be, obviously, connected with some sort of ritual. This chance remark on rituals led me to check out some rum goings on in Porchfield. Black magic on the island. I believe something happened to your rabbits here on the farm. That's right. I came out one morning towards the end of June. Um, this gate is always shut at night time. Yeah. Uh, as I came through, the gate, this gate was open, and I immediately thought somebody had been in the farmyard. And as I walked up the path, I could see the side of the rabbit hutch was down, which was most unusual. We always leave it like this, night time. Yeah, um, closed, closed the door closed, yeah. so the rabbits can't get out and foxes can't get in. Yeah. But that particular morning, which was the 25th of June, as I came up, the side of the hutch was like this. And that couldn't have happened just by accident? or No, by you really animal. have to lift it. It's quite heavy. There's no way it can fall down on its own. You really have to lift it yeah. down. So um, lift it off. Yeah, and as I looked in, um, there were no rabbits, just four little guinea pigs in there. Yeah. Mrs. Cool recounted for me how she had found four of her pet rabbits, missing, believed, stolen, on the same day of the month as several other rabbits had earlier gone missing in ride. Nothing at all. There was a suggestion of the rabbits being used in some cult practices. But my ears really pricked up when Mrs. Cool's level-headed son, Darren, told me that a friend of his had once discovered... He walked up closer to the long stone. Uh, he saw a gathering of people, probably 20, 25 and all, uh, all sort of gathered round it. They had a small fire. 
uh, burning to the one side, and a goat tied to a stake. Well, I believe the goat was alive uh, when he saw when he saw it. Uh, when he got a bit closer, he startled an Alsatian, which I, th I suppose was guarding uh, the group, uh, which set everybody running around, and they spotted him and his friend, and they chased him all the way back down the footpath. And he was so afraid that he uh, didn't like to go back and uh, look again, so... And do you believe him? Oh, yeah, totally, yeah. Your fearless correspondent decided to return to Mottiston Down armed with this new evidence. The 4,000-year-old plinth has a compelling presence. I could feel myself falling under its spell when I trod lightly but firmly in the ashes of a recently abandoned fire. I didn't wait to see the goat. If you like the sound of the Isle of Wight, phone 071 202 2797 for your free holiday guide. My first week on the Isle of Wight was not ideal for following up on the supernatural. The sun shone, ice creams melted, skin peeled, car parks locked solid, and everyone was happy. Mind you, no self-respecting journalist can let that sort of thing affect him. It may have been hot, but I was hot on a story. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, round of applause, please. Brian Rogers down, something great. Come on, please, live it out for me. Oogie, oogie, oogie! Oompa, oompa! Charcoal! Oh, no, not here. Oh, I'll try smartening myself up. Right. No good laughing quietly, madam. You've got to laugh out loud. Bloody ridiculous here. Don't go open your mouth and let laugh, you know? How can you do a comedy act when people are holding their bloody mouths? Bloody ridiculous. Come on, you must see the funny side of this, surely. Maddy, turning here like a bloody what's the matter? I'll see you later. On with the show, yes! At the end of his act, I tailed Crisco the Magician back to his dressing room and found out one more reason why rabbit mortality on this island is uncomfortably high. Well, I used um, a rabbit in my children's shows. Yeah. I used to do the, it's like the rabbit out of the hat trick. Uh, I don't normally use it when I work abroad because of quarantine regulations and so on. So, but I was traveling abroad quite a bit, uh, especially over the last two or three years. And my wife was getting a bit annoyed over the fact that I was hardly at home. And uh, one day, while she was moving some props in my studio at our home. She knocked over a prop and unfortunately the rabbit died. And uh, when I got home, which was two days later, she prepared me a meal, which was very delicious, a casserole. And after I'd eaten it, uh, she informed me that that was uh, Roger the rabbit that was in the casserole. What was your reaction? Well, very upset about it. Oh. Anyway, we, we made it up afterwards and um, uh, just decided we wouldn't have another rabbit, uh, and, uh, and I'm still with her, and uh, everybody, and now that rabbit's presumably, you know, uh, in the rabbit pie in the sky, I suppose. What did it taste like? Delicious. This was the weather for messing about in boats, and your correspondent, armed with a pedalo and a copy of The Exorcist, set off for a quiet day on the Solent. But this is cows in August, and I found myself embroiled, together with 300 other craft, in the yachting monthly Cows Classic. The good news was that one of the boats was called Count Dracula. Despite all my efforts, vampirism was not something I'd managed to unearth on the island. So my hopes rose. I enlisted as cabin boy and wore my shirt open at the collar. But not a single overlapping tooth was to be found among the respectable members of Captain Hamby's hospitable crew. In fact, far from being in the grip of dark forces, I was aboard one of the luckiest ships alive. Count Dracula had survived Jutland, Scarpa Flow, Dunkirk, and the Cow's Classic. When did it become known as Count Dracula? I mean, presumably Kaiser Wilhelm didn't call it that. Oh, no, no. In 1922, 
when Dr. Greiner bought it from the uh, Naval Disposals, and at that time, the first yeah. series of Count Dracula films were being made. Oh. So it's not so to it's do with any vampiric practices that have taken Lord, place no. on board? I sometimes wonder. We did have a dedication service to make sure that there were still no evil spirits on board. Oh, really? Yeah. Because uh, the Isle of Wight, I've heard, and I'm chasing up this story for the, for the column, there's a certain amount of the uh, occult going on there. There's a bit of black magic over there. Do you, do you know about that? No, I don't know about that. I've never been asked to offer sound... your boat for oh, no. their outings or anything no, nothing like that. No. Better luck came my way at the annual Garlic Festival when I found Count Dracula himself. A Garlic Festival is to a vampire what a photographer's outing must be like to Princess Di. But here was the Count, white-faced and top-hatted, springing from his wheelie bin, racing across the rain-sodden turf and attempting to carry off the Garlic Queen, who was, for some reason, astride a motorised champagne bottle at the time. One of the organisers told me that in a previous garlic festival, the crowd had been so inflamed with anti-Dracula feeling that there'd been a pitch invasion of children who rained down such a hail of garlic buds upon him that the vampire king had been taken to hospital. Nearly everyone I've met here is a mainlander like me. Some, like my editor and employer, Mr. Hurst, have only drifted down from West London. But everyone else seems to be from Oldham. Apart, of course, from my dear landlady, Miss Dorothy Wright of Seaview, who is from Ashton under Lyne. Dorothy, who is 87, not only cooks the finest rashers in the Western Hemisphere, she's also blessed with the gift of prophecy. Well, which one do you, uh, which well, one do you fancy? I'll go and lay, lay a bet for you today, quietly, discreetly. Which one do you think? Don't let the neighbours in. Don't let the neighbours drop. Well, Lady Donoghue, that's uh, nine to one. Yes. Lady Donoghue, I'll write that down, shall I? At the, what, what's the, Le the two, no. two, uh, 220 at Perth. Mm -hmm. Long way away. And then Moonshine Dancer. Yeah. OK, and that's the 420, also at Perth. OK. You know how to write that, don't you, ma'am? Hmm? You know how to write that. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know how to choose them. I hope right? so. Mm. You do. Hello. Hello. Uh, I'd like to place this bet, please, sir. Uh, 220 per, 420 per. Hello, oh, Dorothy. Hello. Hello. That was Hello. lovely. Hello. What's all this? Oh. <laughs> really? Yes, really? Yes. 
What, you got your paper? Yes, yes. Please. How did we do? First? Seven to two. Yes. First. Really? Yes, as I haven't looked at the other yet, but we won. Go on, I won't believe it till I see it. Really? I shall be asking Mr Hurst if Dorothy can be given regular employment as the county press resident tipster. Captain Dorothy has a certain ring about it. I'll do my column, you can be racing correspondent. Show me the paper, I want to see it. Oh, where is it? Oh, I won't, I won't. I was just beginning to enjoy my new career when deadline day arrived. I was now up to the Isle of Wight County Press to publish will be damned. Well, yes, and I think you've, uh, you know, touched upon one or two things that uh, are, uh, you have sort of found out that most people won't uh, be too aware of and mm. uh, will be very interesting, as well as, uh, obviously, we're doing the things like the Garlic Festival and the, and the boats, which are, are more well-known. Yeah, I mean, everybody mm, nice talks mix. about the yeah. ferry. Oh, yes, so, the ferry, yes. I mean, I think at the beginning I had to put something in <laughs> yes, the ferry yes. before he goes on about it. Mm. It is quite expensive, mm. but uh, they still come. Yeah. <laughs> Two and a half miles of water separate the Isle of Wight from the mainland. And though a minority may fly, everything else has to go by ferry. Everyone complains about the prices, but there is an alternative. <laughs> Always on the lookout for a travel bargain, I enlisted in the Ride Rescue Relay Team last Saturday afternoon as they headed off into one of the biggest tides of the summer. Like a true investigative journalist, I was not going to shrink from any new experience. But with a fierce current and an age disadvantage of 31 years, I could only see myself as a liability to the team. The moment has come. Ooh, it's ridiculous. Take your life jacket off when you go in the water. <laughs> Land-based life jacket. Uh, no, I, I, I'm not really used to swimming with goggles, so can I have a go at just doing it without? Yeah, you swim. Is that all right? Right, you jump I'm slightly eccentric. I'm okay. in neutral. You ready? Yep, you just carry on. Oh. Ah. Big screen. Oh. We're going to pick Cap up now. Well, which way do I go then? You just keep going forward. Oh, yes, keep both there. Yeah. Towards Russia. Gosport. 